President Museveni of Uganda has since June 2016 been trying to court members of the opposition to jump ship and join the National Resistance Movement, NRM, mostly by offering them jobs. Top on the list of those who were offered jobs are the Kampala Minister Betty Amonge, Lands Minister Betty Kamya, Youth Minister Nakiwala Kiyingi, and Environment State Minister. Early last month, the Yivu County MP, Mr. Bernard Atiku, a former member of the Opposition Forum for Democratic Change, who contested the 2016 elections as an independent candidate, announced his decision to join the NRM. With the exception of Ms. Amonge, all the other four mentioned participants in the NRM polls participated, rather, in the NRM polls on Friday. We are now joined by the National Coordinator on the 40 platform from Uganda, Jatsin Mwesigwa. Thank you very much for joining us. Well, thank you for having me. All right. The president, we understand, is trying to court opposition. What's the latest on this? Uh, well, that's, uh, that's not new to us because the president has always fished from the opposition. He, he knows that the, the, the current uh, regime, the National Resistance Movement, can no longer attract new entrants. So all he does is focus on dismantling opposition. So it, it's not news here that the president is fishing from opposition. He has always, you know, targeted those uh, who can be available for, you know, to, to be bold politically. So... It's not news here. He has always faced from opposition. So is it that he's taking the best out of the opposition now? And is he succeeding? What are the people saying? Uh, you know, it's, it depends because s some politicians, some political players are always available for, for buy and sell. So he normally uses different people to convince those opposition politicians to join him. And those who, are, who accept, he normally gives them some quite um, amount of money and he, he, he has successfully managed to take a few of them, including those that you just mentioned, the, the current lands minister, uh, uh, Betty Amongi. She, 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 she was in the UPC, but now she's a minister in the government. There is uh, uh, another minister uh, who also defected recently, but unfortunately, most of them lose popularity in the public. So uh, the president has to dismantle opposition and he only does so by, you know, buying them off using the state resources. So how is the opposition fighting back to ensure that their members are not pulled out, especially, like you said, the strong ones? Uh, you know, it's, it's quite hard to fight because this is uh, about personal discipline. If someone believes they can be bought, then opposition has nothing to do with it. But what should be, you know... You, you know, you, what is important here is that a few are bought. And the president, in most cases, like in a year, he targets, when it's coming to election time, he targets those who are opposing him strongly, and he fishes out at least one or two. And, and so the opposition, in, it's very strong here, it's solid, and they don't have to focus on those who are available to be bought by President Museven. Uh, on the flip side, before we go on to look at all the party issues that are coming up, on the flip side of the coin, is if this opposition brings something to the table, is it not in the interest of the people that they are part of the government in order to attract some of the services to the people? You know, that, that's, uh, that's some, some bit of defense that these uh, people who defect have been putting forward, that it's better to serve when they're the other side, that since they've been struggling to you know, bring services to their people. And they always claim that they decide to join President Museveni so that they can bring these very services. But that's not the fact. Most of them are bought by President Museveni to join him so that he can weaken the opposition. So it's, it's not about service delivery. It's about personal discipline. And, and that has been the habit uh, since President Museveni's popularity started diminishing. Okay, we understand the NRS, NRM uh, is um, held its primaries, rather, uh, for parliamentary flag bearers in the forthcoming election. Could you quickly tell us how that went? Well, 
the last time I had an interview on this on, on Press TV, I, I told you that we don't expect a peaceful election. And, and what was shocking on Friday was that the primaries of the ruling government were very violent. And it's even shocking here. We saw uh, the, uh, the former Attorney General uh, Lukutana shooting, uh, allegedly shooting uh, one of the supporters of, of his opponents. We saw a lot of violence in different parts of the country. But, you know, most importantly, it's what happened in the president's home area. There was a lot of violence in his home district. Uh, people who were, you know, contesting are protesting the results of, of these uh, elections. And, and most of them are threatening to either contest as independents or these elections are repeated. They are, they, they are stating for a re-election. So uh, the, 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 these elections, what we can pick from them is that we don't expect a party that is failing to organize its internal election to organize a national election. So as I said earlier, we, we, we expect quite a violent election as portrayed on Friday in the NRM primaries. Uh, there are suggestions that all of these moves, including the wooing of uh, some opposition member, is an attempt to form uh, some sort of one-party system in Uganda. Uh, do you agree with this uh, school of thought? I don't think so, because uh, Uganda is a multi-party system, and you know, I don't think there's any possibility that one uh, one party system can be adopted here. But as I told you, the, the president does not allow other party other parties to you know form coalitions and be strong as one. So what he does is to make sure that he dismantles them. And I don't think genuinely he would agitate for a, a one party system because he, uh, he at the same time having come in through military means, he, he wants to use some disguised democracy portray Uganda as a democratic country. So he, he won't, I don't think he would, be, he would even be interested in the one-party system. But again, it also, you know, takes us to, 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 to what other opposition parties have been trying to do. They have tried to form coalitions before, though they have not been successful, specifically due to the infiltration of still state agencies. When the opposition tries to form a coalition, the president tries also to facilitate another person to dismantle the coalition. So it's not about one party system. It's about, you know, having different parties, but who are not, you know, playing a bigger role in the whole electoral system. All right, before I let you go, I want to ask you, how would you um, rate the political consciousness of the people and how invested they are in the political um, drama that's playing out in Uganda? You know, there is a lot at play in Uganda here, and maybe focusing on, on the, the national election, there is a new entrant who has come into the race, Lieutenant General Henry Tumukunde, the highest ranking military officer to, to enter into the presidential race. He's a, he's, a, he's a high, he's a sophisticated officer, the former chief of military intelligence, former director general of internal security organization, former security minister. So he's, he's, he's a new entrant into the race and is bringing a lot of panic to, 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 to government. And we, we saw recently he, when he declared that he was going to contest, he was imprisoned for almost two months. And now he's out. Still threats have been issued against him. Criminal investigation department calling him, summoning him to, to the headquarters for questioning. So there is a lot of changes that are coming in. And with the entrance of Lieutenant General Henry Tumukunde, the, the political environment here is, is, is changing. And as I told you even in the previous interview, the role of the army here is very fundamental into this election. And so wherever, however much Bob Wine had tried to, you know, bring up, you know, GL up the youth, the entrance of Lieutenant General Henry Tumukunde is changing the whole environment because the military, people want someone who understands the military, who understands the security apparatus. So Lieutenant General tends to present that. And to be honest with you, he's putting a lot of pressure on President Museven, and President Museven currently is panicking to make sure that he doesn't appear on the ballot paper. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Jackson Musigwa, for your time and your thoughts on the news. Thank you so much for having me.